Today we are talking OMAD, one meal a day. This is the new thing that people seem to be doing. Are we gonna, does it work? What exactly is it? Let's dive in. What's up everyone? It's Anthony from AB Fitness Center where we help you to lose body fat, gain muscle, and get stronger. Today, like I said, we're covering the OMAD diet and everything OMAD, 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 OMAD. I actually love that acronym. I think it's a great acronym, but it stands for basically one meal a day. But before we get into it, make sure you hit that subscribe button. This way you never miss a beat and you get real life, applicable fitness information without the fluff. So let's get rolling right into it. And if you haven't already, head on over to Instagram at AB Fitness and give me a follow on there. I'll be happy to help you if you have any questions. So what is OMAD? Well, like I said, it's basically one meal a day. It's in a form and it's a form of intermittent fasting, which basically means you're fasting for a certain amount of hours a day, specifically in this case, 23 hours of the day, and you have one hour to eat all of your calories. So it's basically one giant meal a day. Now I kind of use this as an example to most people when I'm explaining to them about meal timing. Meal timing has been something that, and if you've ever done any type of intermittent fasting, you'll know that it doesn't matter when you eat, right? Meal timing is kind of out the window. That's kind of something that was in like the 90s that was supposedly really important. If you ate every two to three hours, you would speed up your metabolism, but that was found to be debunked. So that's not true at all. So you don't have to worry about meal timing. So I always use kind of like OMAD as an example when I explain it. I always tell people you can have one meal a day or you can have 10 meals a day. It doesn't matter. It's going to equal the same amount of fat loss regardless. I mean, obviously this goes without saying is make sure that you're counting your calories. But typically when you're eating one giant meal a day, it's very hard to hit your certain amount of calories. So for me, when I'm trying to lose body fat, I'm eating roughly... 28, 2700 calories a day when I'm trying to lose body fat, even up to the 3000, again, in that range, depending on how fast I want to lose it. But I can't even imagine having that in one meal. That's a huge, huge meal to have to eat. But I'm going to get into some of the benefits and some of the cons with it. But basically, that's the same premise. If I ate, was eating 2800 calories every day and I did that eating one meal a day, it's the same, I would net the same fat loss as if I had that over five meals. But a lot of people like this approach because it allows them to feel full and I'll kind of explain why I think it has some benefits to it in that case. And again, it also allows people to, you know, kind of that sensation of like being really full. Well, we'll talk about it. So let's start with the benefits of it, right? Like I actually do think there are some benefits to it. One, you're getting that sensation of eating a really, really big meal and it'll keep you full. Once getting to that full window, so let's say you decide, okay, every day I'm just going to eat dinner. I'm just going to fast till dinner. So when you get to dinner, you're going to be so hungry, so ravenous, and you're going to eat that giant meal. So let's say you're supposed to eat 16, 17, 1800 calories a day. You're going to have all of that in that one hour window. You're going to feel so full. It's going to be almost a chore to eat that. <laughs> so you'll get that satisfaction while still hitting your fat loss goals. Um, the second benefit that it has also is saves you a ton of time. So now you don't have to worry about like eating multiple meals throughout the day, preparing multiple things. It allows you to kind of have the best of both worlds, whereas like you could focus on other things and still hit that one meal a day and then just kind of move on from there. So that's, that's another, I think that's a huge benefit. Again, like I said, you don't have to prepare multiple meals. Uh, you also, another benefit, you get to eat basically whatever you want for that one meal. So if you have all your 1800 calories in one meal, that's a lot of protein, a lot of carbs and a lot of fat to be sitting down and eating in one, one meal. So, but again, you get, you get to basically eat whatever you want. If you want some ice cream, if you want pizza, all of that's fine. Cause it's going to be very hard to hit all of your calories for the day. As long as you hit that. But again, is that optimal for health? Mm, not really, but again, it does allow you to have like that, that more of a flexibility because you're having so many calories in one sitting. And again, I think another benefit to it too, it's a lot easier to fit in because most people have trouble counting macros and paying attention to calories. So if they limit themselves to one meal, trying to eat as healthy as they can for that one meal, chances are they will not eat enough calories. So they'll end up hitting their weight loss goals. A little simpler to do. Just eat whatever you want for one meal, one hour out of the day. Chances are, even if you ate everything, you would still be sub those calories you needed to lose body fat. So is this optimal for fat loss? 
The answer is for fat loss, it doesn't matter. Everything is the same. Like I told, it doesn't matter if you have one meal a day or 10. As long as you're focusing on calories in versus calories out, you're gonna hit that regardless if it's one or 10 meals a day. So in that case, it doesn't. Does it make following it a little bit easier? Yes, to some extent. Is it optimal for fat loss? If it's gonna let you stick to it more, then I guess the answer to that is yes. It really just depends on the person. But let's roll into some cons, okay? Some of the cons that I have. I would not do this while trying to gain muscle. If your goal was strictly to gain muscle, this is insufficient. You need to be spiking protein synthesis. You have like kind of like windows of building muscle throughout the day. So you need to have like constant, a, a drip of protein every couple of hours, every three to five hours, you need to have some amount of protein to stimulate protein synthesis in order to build muscle. So this is where I think intermittent fasting kind of goes bad because you need that drip of amino acids throughout the day and that bolus effect of amino acids, I should say, throughout the day, and you're missing all those windows. So let's say, again, you're doing 23-hour fast, you've missed at least four windows until you got up to that one meal. So that, that's a lot. It's a lot of wasted potential for muscle building in that case. So I don't think it's optimal for gaining muscle. I don't think intermittent fasting period is optimal for gaining muscle. Um, like I said, you miss a lot of protein windows with that. You're also, the other thing that I think is a really big con is you're kind of shotgunning your protein and your fat intake in one meal. So I need, a, I need anywhere between 230 to 250 grams of protein and getting that in one meal, uh, that's definitely not optimal. I don't think that that's, that's gonna be as good as it would be if I spread that protein intake out. So I think in that case, it's not good. Again, the same thing, if you're supposed to have, you know, 60, 70 grams of fat in a day and you're having that in one meal, kind of a lot in one hour of a window. I just think that it should be evenly spaced out. Same thing with carbs, I just think it's just too much in one window. Again, but everyone's different. Everybody's calorie limits are different. Uh, but when it comes to putting on muscle and being in more of a calorie surplus, I don't think that's a good idea. Um, and again, when dieting on it, you can lose muscle because you're losing those windows. I don't think that it's good. I also think that athletic performance is gonna drop off a little bit. Because remember, when you're dieting and you're focusing and fasting and getting to that window of one hour eating, until you get used to that, and this is my next point, it takes time for you to kind of retrain your stomach <laughs> so you can get used to going through that fast. But until then, you're gonna be going through a period where kind of all you're thinking about is food. It's like, it's a weird feeling at first. You gotta get used to that. But that's definitely a huge con going right out of it. So this is what I think you should do. I think OMAD has its benefit. I think intermittent fasting has its benefit. I think though, in order to optimize the way your body looks, what you need to do is, I would bolus, if you wanted to do this, I would bolus my carbs and my fat and I would bank those and hold on to them and I would sprinkle in my protein intakes throughout the day. So maybe having two scoops of protein for breakfast, maybe for lunch just having you know protein and some vegetables, and then for dinner having that giant, giant meal this way, at least you have it spaced out throughout the day, and at least you're getting constant drips of protein, again, in order to stimulate muscle protein synthesis, help to maintain, rebuild, and ultimately change your physique. So I think that that's probably the better way to do it. Have like a breakfast, which is mainly protein, have a lunch that has some, maybe some protein and some vegetables in it, and then save all your carbs and your fat for that one giant meal at the end of the day. I actually like to do this. I kind of do this on the weekends, and I save all my calories and fats for mainly like a nice meal with my family at dinner, but it helps me to kind of sustain my fat loss, uh, bank my calories and allows me to hit my goals a lot easier. So again, like I said, all of these things, intermittent fasting, OMAD, they're all tools in the toolbox and you have to know when you should utilize them the best of your ability. But I think if you're gonna do OMAD, I think you should do what I said, bolus out the protein and maybe give yourself four protein servings throughout the day, but then maybe have you know, one giant carb and fat protein meal. So again, you're basically having four eating windows. So maybe breakfast, just protein, maybe lunch, just protein. Maybe let's just say it's dinner is your giant meal and then maybe before bed another protein shake or some type of form of protein before you go to bed. This way you evenly space that out. It'll help you with athletic performance. It'll help you to build and maintain more muscle mass and it will also help you to stick on track. Plus then you're not also having to worry about eating so much protein in one meal. All right, so if you're interested in sitting down with me to personally go over your health and your fitness, just leave me a message anywhere. You can comment below and we'll get, get you on track. 
All right, guys, I will catch you on the next one. And don't forget to share this video with someone who's doing OMAD right now and let them know the right way to do it. All right, guys, I'll catch you on the next one.